Hello, here we are at Pop Dust Presents, um, pre- presented by Tasting Room. Ooh, try to say that word. Le cook, le cook, bleh. That was beautiful. <laughs> and do you want to introduce yourself to the people? Hi, I'm Lizzie. Yes, and here we are. And she just performed some really incredible music, unbelievable voice. Um, we're very happy to have you here. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm doing pretty, pretty well. How do you like New York? How is that for you? Well, I'll be honest and say like it's a little overwhelming, yeah. but also like absolutely fascinating and beautiful at the yeah. same time. Like I was saying at dinner earlier, um, you know, you just see like these people come out of the buildings and you're like, where are they going? Like, what is their <laughs> life? Like, what's their deal? Yeah. Like this cute old couple with like, that must be their grandson. And like, I wonder like which floor they live on and like what their apartment's like. Mm. Like you do like all these people who have so many people having lives just in a small amount of space is like really fascinating to me. Yeah. And then you live in a very different kind of place though, right? Don't you have a, you have a farm in Iowa? I live. Yeah. So I live in Northeastern Iowa. Um, I grew up in a town, an area called the Quad Cities, Rock Island, Illinois. So it was like as a whole, maybe there's like, you know, 400, 500,000 people in the entire like kind of region. But my town I grew up in was like 35,000 people. Okay. Um, But where I live now is like 8,000 people. Wow. Um, So you have a lot of, a lot of space. Mm -hmm. So you could, I don't know. It's just none, neither is better or worse. It's just different. Right. And what what do you do with all of that space? How do you, um, well, I, I got uh, to start it with 10 acres and I have like a house and some outbuildings, like a barn and a green bin mm-hmm. and a machine shed and all this mm-hmm. stuff that was already there. The following year, I got another 37 acres of land Wow! and it had been in corn and soybeans. And now I'm just putting it into grass and making oh my hay. Gosh. Not personally. Someone else <laughs> is doing it while I'm traveling. The, the hope is to get there more so that I can sort of build my little compound. That's amazing. That's yeah. very cool. And so then in terms of your music, is that a part of it for you that sort of lifestyle and way of going about things I mean it remains to be seen because I've been on the go since moving like I lived in California for 12 years sure. Southern California and uh, since I've moved I haven't really stayed put long enough to truly know what how that informs my music mm. but I definitely always have kind of like to like do things my own way so maybe part of having a place in the middle of nowhere is like that is kind of my vibe. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very cool. And so then your latest release, tell us about that. How long has that been in the works? Like how did that come about, et cetera, et cetera? <laughs> yes, I have a new album out. It's called When I'm Alone, The Piano mm-hmm. Retrospective. It came out in April. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not exactly like a new, new release because right. it's actually piano vocal versions of a collection of my songs from the last four albums I've put out. So basically like my past decade of of music. Uh, I put out four full length albums and some cover EPs and some live EPs. Um, so I found myself last year promoting my record castles, which came out last year in this very stripped down, just piano vocal mm-hmm. way. And I really enjoyed it. Cause I usually play guitar and I was like, wow, like it's really like very new for me yeah. to actually sing without like having a guitar in my hands. I want to explore this thing. And I just really started finding that I liked you know, being able to move my body in different Mm. ways. And even if it looks stupid, like it feels good, you know, to be able to hunker down into notes. So it kind of was born of just doing it and being like, oh, wow, this is fun. And like a very casual setting to deciding, hey, what if I recorded a bunch of my old songs in this fashion to actually like doing it last summer and fall in Berlin and then um, it coming out in April. And now I'm doing a whole tour with Joe on piano and myself Mm. singing. That's incredible. Yeah. And so you just say you did it in Berlin? We recorded a lot of it in Berlin, yeah. Wow. So I I tour in the on the UK and mm-hmm. Norway and like Western Europe quite a bit. Okay. Um. So the producer Martin Kraft is actually is an Australian guy that I met in England who mm-hmm. now lives in Berlin. How long has this been the thing for you? I've been singing ever since I was a little kid. Sure. Um. Mm-hmm. I yeah, like born in Rock Island, Illinois. Everyone in my family could like sing. Mm-hmm. My, my great grandfather was like a barbershop quartet international champion. So I was like exposed to music. I started doing musical theater as a kid. I was Annie when I was 10. And then in high school, started teaching myself guitar and writing songs. I was about to ask, what, what was your favorite role if you're in musical theater? Probably Annie. Yeah. It's a good role. Yeah. Strong. I did like 80 shows. Oh my God. Yeah. How? Why? Because there was like a dinner theater in my town. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, professional theater and I was only nine and like yeah. I got to like you know I 
get to miss school sometimes and I, I got was paid. The coolest, yeah. It was super cool. And it was just like nice because I, even though I was only nine, like because I was being trusted with the lead role, like sure. adults didn't just talk to me like I was a dumb kid, you know, mm-hmm. like I really had enjoyed that about the theater that yeah. like the kids weren't really treated like kids. They were kind of treated like tiny adults. <laughs> do you think any of that has carried over into why you've chosen to do this? I mean, yeah, for sure. Psychologically significant, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think just, I always like wanted to share and wanted people to listen. You know, I think I'm the youngest of four kids. And okay. so probably in some way I started like being like, you know, I have this big voice. Everyone has to listen to me now. Mm. You know, I'm sure it came a little bit from attention seeking yeah. and being sensitive and wanting to express myself. Um, I started writing songs even before I played guitar. I was always making lyrics up. Just uh, always been very moved to like share my story and like express myself. What is it that you're trying to say? I guess like, what are you trying to get across to people and spending your time doing this? Even in high school, I started writing songs as this kind of angsty teenager who was, you know, crushing on dudes who maybe didn't like me back or had to deal with mean girls or stupid teachers that just (laughs) didn't understand me. You know, that's universal. That's it was about me, but it was something that, you know, I didn't really share those songs with anyone. But like, you know, 10 years later, I'm still sort of writing these songs about every experience in my life, like a relationship that is painful, Mm -hmm. losing someone you love. Um, witnessing just the world around you and like, you know, the political climate or, you know, things you see on social media even now. I mean, it's just really, it can be anything. It's like, I'm reacting to the feelings of my, how I interpret the world around me and my experiences. And I'm turning those into these kind of heartfelt songs, but then they kind of stop being just mine because Mm -hmm. as I've been fortunate to like grow and get a fan base and stuff, it's like they those songs become theirs because everything yeah. is so universal in that way. Like everyone's had their heart broken. Like everyone's felt lost. You know, you gain perspective when you have a catalog of work you can look back on that. Uh, like if I can really say that actually some of the most painful times in my life led to some of the most um, brilliant songs I've made that led to more joy than I ever could have imagined. Mm-hmm. Like having a song that, you know, it was birth of like something that was shitty. Part of my language. Can I say shitty on no, pop dust? Fuck, <laughs> fuck it. Oh no. <laughs> something that was shitty. And then having like being able to get over that thing and not care about yeah. it anymore. And then see how like the song, like then went number one in Norway. And now yeah. I go to Norway all the time. And it's like, thank goodness for that situation, right. you know, because this is way better than if that thing would have worked out. So I think it sort of gives you that perspective of like, like the impermanence perspective, mm-hmm. knowing that things pass. Absolutely. That even when things feel like they're not going to be okay, like they're usually going to be okay. Mm-hmm. I say that now, I sound very wise, but I mean, I struggle with stuff still, sure. but I think, you know, old age, not old age, but <laughs> growing, <laughs> okay, just, growing older, maturing yeah. and having experience does lead you to see that like there's things that feel really like hard that later on you'll realize we're huge gifts, Mm. gifts, gifts. That was very wise and lovely. Thank you so much for joining (laughs) us for Pop Dust Presents um, in the magic box. We're sorry for putting you through this, but so glad you're here. Oh no, it's been so fun. (laughs) Sorry I didn't let our scene last longer. Hey, that's okay. We can, you know what? We'll work on it for next time. time. We'll work on it for next time. We can write a script. It's been great. Thank you so much.